Hey, you. Uh, hey. Oh, man. Oh, God, this is so comfy. I'm just gonna lie here and suffocate on my own vomit now. I, uh, I had a thing I wanted to tell you. Uh-huh. This room sure looks different when it's spinning. So I was browsing through the used book ads in the paper when I... Listen, Eileen, I'm totally excited about books right now, but... Wait, hear me out! So I noticed this article about a war veteran from Conwell Springs who just died. I remembered that you used to live there and everything, and... Oh, how I wish for joyful, blissful sleep. A and get this! His name was Joseph. Joseph Rain. What did you just say? You knew him, right? I knew it! I knew you'd know him! Yeah, he is... was my grandfather. Hey, wait a minute. I never told you where I grew up. Oh, well, I, uh, well, I might have sort of looked you up. That is not cool, Eileen. Seriously. I just couldn't help myself. Well, one of these days you're gonna help yourself to a restraining order. I'm just telling you this as a friend. I know. Well, anyway, you should know that the funeral is tomorrow. Okay. Are you gonna go? I don't know. Good night, Eileen. <sighs> Good night, Kathy. Oh, God, make it stop. Looks like Eileen left a note for me here. Hi, Kat. Since it's such a long drive, I set the alarm so you won't miss the funeral. Thank me later. E. I'm so getting a new roommate. Well, I guess I should get going. I'm late enough as it is. That movie's not out yet. It's a promo poster Eileen got for being an extra. She tells everyone who walks in here the same joke. Spoiler alert, the boat sinks. <laughs> Would be fun, but a bit too childish. Even for me. Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Mildred. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get her for that. I wish I could wrap up that fact and save it for Christmas. I can certainly see the appeal of blindly rummaging through Eileen's clothes, but seriously, I've got better things to do. Does anyone object? Guess not. Dead people rule. We are gathered here today to honor a person of great integrity, a pillar of the community, and a decorated war hero. His name was Joseph Irving Rain. We all remember his warm heart, his compassion, and his eagerness to help others. His passing while our loss is surely heaven's gain. Now we entrust our brother Joseph to God's mercy. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, 
ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies so they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Oh, Kathy, you big baby, just talk to her. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Rain? Have we met, Anne? You look strangely familiar. It's me. It's Catherine. Catherine who? You don't recognize me? I guess it's been a while. I might be a bit taller than you remember me. Kathy? Bless my soul. Look at you, all grown up. Oh, how I wish Joseph could see you now, finally coming home. Let's hope he can, wherever he is. A comforting thought, dear. Lord, how long has it been? Ten years? Fifteen? Fifteen sounds about right. I was six when Mom took me away. Goodness, we have some catching up to do then. <laughs> I want to know everything. Listen, I'm not quite ready to leave yet, but why don't you join me at the house in half an hour? Sure, I'd love to. I passed it on my way here. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll see you soon then. I'm so glad you found your way back home. I can't wait for us to have a chance to talk. Same here. See you in a bit. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. If you wish to find God, the Church of the Holy Trinity is always open to you. Is that so? Here, have a brochure. It's never too late to turn away from the path of sin. And what makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path, Father? Wouldn't you say that prejudice is but a small step from the seven big ones? I simply meant that we are all sinful creatures, child. I hope to see you at the church. Don't get your hopes up, buddy. I'll pray for you. I wish you comfort in this time of grief. Grandma, anybody home? Oh, hello, dear. I was just wondering what took you so long. Sorry, I couldn't resist taking that old wheelchair for a spin. Oh, don't give me that look. I put it back. You haven't changed one bit. Always kidding around, just like when you were little. Come have a seat. We have so much to talk about. So, now, tell me about your life in the city. Oh, there's not much to tell. I'm going to school for journalism. It's my second year. I ride a motorcycle in case you missed it there out front. Ah, oh, that's right. Just like your father. Yeah, I suppose. I must ask. Have you heard anything from your father? Anything at all? No, nothing since he bailed way back then. I expected as much. He disappeared without a trace. No matter, that's ancient history. How Sharon then? Uh, mom's good, yeah. She's kind of between jobs right now, but things are okay. I'm glad to hear it. I was worried about how you two would cope in the city, considering Sharon's problems. Yeah, about that. I'm sorry I didn't visit sooner, Grandma. Mom, she told me all these horrible lies about you and Grandpa. When I was old enough to understand what she was doing, I felt like it was much too late. It wasn't your fault, dear. You were a child. 
I'm just happy that you're here now. Me too. So, what about you? How have you been doing all these years? I've been lonely ever since the accident. There's no denying that. What accident? Goodness gracious. Of course you don't know. She took you away before it all happened. Don't know what? I will never forget that dreadful day. August 16th, 1981. It was the middle of the night when Sheriff Truman knocked on our door. He had Joseph with him. I couldn't even recognize Joseph at first. All dirty and wet with an awful blank stare on his face, like his soul had been ripped from his body. Since that day, he never spoke a word. Forever confined to that blasted wheelchair. Really? For all this time? I had no idea. It came as a shock to all of us. That's horrible, Grandma. I'm so sorry. Thank you, dear. Why do you think Grandpa suddenly left that night in 81? I haven't the faintest idea. He acted very peculiar not long before it happened, disappearing for hours at a time. At first, I even suspected he was having an affair. When I asked him about it, he just said he was chasing old demons. It must have had something to do with the war. Maybe it was post-traumatic stress disorder? Grandpa always had a hard time showing weakness. I don't know, dear. I I'm just speculating. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Joseph was a man of few words. I'm sure he just didn't wish to burden me with it, whatever it was. What did the doctors have to say about Grandpa's condition? Persistent vegetative state. That's what they call it. I've heard it all by now. One doctor said it was a stroke. Another claimed it was a seizure. The third hack tried to sell it off as a severe infection. It's all a load of tripe. I had an MRI performed on Joseph. It's one of those state-of-the-art head scans. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yes, well, according to the scan, his brain was completely intact. They thought it was a technical problem at the time, some kind of glitch. But the result was the same after three different scans on three different machines. Eventually, they had to confess that they simply had no credible explanation for the state he was in. Hmm. And this injury just happened to occur on the very same night he mysteriously disappears? Indeed. I refuse to believe it was a coincidence. What did Sheriff Truman have to say about the matter? <sighs> Not much. He said they simply found Joseph in that condition on the outskirts of town. The sheriff was convinced there was some kind of foul play involved, but the investigation turned up nothing. He later said that he was sorry, but that he was forced to close the case. You know, I could try to find out more about this. You're welcome to try, dear. Some kind of closure would mean the world to me. Okay. I think I'll head over to the sheriff's station for a little chat then. Would be nice to witness police doing some actual police service for once. Sure, you go ahead. Let me know if I can be of any more help. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. Hi. Hello. Do I have to commit a crime to get your attention? Because I seriously will. Ma'am, I'm really quite busy at the moment. Hey, wait. I know you. I'm pretty sure you don't. Yes, I do. You're Kathy. Kathy Rain. My reputation precedes me in a kind of but not totally creepy way. Aw, oh, come on. It's me, Lenny. Lenny Marks. I'm drawing a blank. Really? You don't remember us playing when we were little kids? Not really. Sorry, buddy. Darn. 
Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, what can I do for you today? I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. Okay, I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff then. Sure thing. His office is to your right. Well, gotta go. See ya! Hello, Sheriff. Do you have a moment? Not really. Make it quick. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods. That's what happened. If that's all there is, why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? It was just standard procedure. A general occurrence report always has to be filed. I see. Did you know him at all? No, I haven't been in town for long. Man sure has one hell of a reputation, though. It's been over a decade since he was put in that wheelchair, and people still talk about the man he used to be. It's like he was a cult leader or something. Sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Could be, but you know what they say. Things too good to be true usually are. Could I have a look at that report? Absolutely not. They're official police documents. Why not? I thought filed police reports are public record. Not in this state, they ain't. Aw, oh, come on, Sheriff. What's the big deal? It was a long time ago. It would make this girl very, very happy. Are you trying to use flirtation on an officer of the law? Well, that shit may work on numbnuts like Lenny, but I got work to do. But I'm family. Doesn't that count for something? You consider yourself family? I've never even seen you before in this town. It's complicated. Guess what's complicated? Not to mention illegal. Handing out evidence to anyone who asks for it. Lenny, a little help here? Don't you agree that he's taking by the book too far? Well, uh, boss, she is his granddaughter, really. I don't think it's any... Don't you think I know that? There are rules. Am I the only one in here who cares about the law? Too much coffee? Try not to pop a vein. You want to see the inside of a cell? Oh, cuff me, officer. Spare me the torment of your rhetorical questions and veiled threats. Uh, just follow the rules like everyone else. I've had enough of this nonsense. Fine. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Hey, I need to see the police report from 81 when my grandfather was found by the old sheriff. I'd love to help, Kathy. The files are right here behind me. But you better check with the sheriff first. Okay, I'll do that. Well, gotta go. See ya. Looks like talking isn't gonna help me get that report. I'll have to take matters into my own hands. I wonder what's behind those doors. Hey, Sheriff. What's the deal with that bump? What bump? Hey. What? I can't hear you! Thanks! That was getting annoying. Hey. Hi there. So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Is that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. For your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. But that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I think I've heard enough, buddy. You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. You need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. I'd say my services in this matter are worth at least 20 bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Fine. Ten. Seven. <sighs> Deal. Good. So, uh, 
What am I doing again? Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't care how you do it, as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Okay, then. Let me know when. Will do. Hey, the jail is off limits. You shouldn't be in there. Oh, sorry. I, I just heard someone yelling. Uh, I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Ah, <sighs> oh, what now? Okay, I have to make this quick. Okay, let's have a look. Hmm, I'm gonna have to get my hands on that recorder. Okay, let's find the key to locker number five. Got it. How's the paperwork coming along, man? Uh, okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. All right, got it. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. I don't want to show him that. Sure, I'll show him the police report I stole from under his nose. That's a great idea. Well, gotta go. See ya. Lenny Marks. Sure, he's cute, but no. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. I wanted to ask you- I really don't know- The sheriff may have more information. Well, gotta go. See ya. Hey, uh, Kathy, wait. What? Do you eat foot? I, I mean, food? Absolutely not. I feed on human misery. I, uh... Relax, Lenny. Yes, I do eat food. Oh, well, great. Can I buy you food sometime? And also buy food for me? And, and then maybe we can eat the food together? I'm really busy right now. Maybe later. Oh, okay. See ya. dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? 
Would you mind if I took a look in the attic? I suppose it would do no harm. Come with me. Thanks, Grandma. You're welcome, dear. Be careful now. Nothing. The bulb must be burned out. The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. The bulb looks burned out. Free light bulb. Score! There we go. A worn office chair on wheels. I'm feeling a sudden urge to do a race. Yes! Let's see what's in here. There were two pictures, a newspaper clipping, a key, and a tape inside. Tragic drowning in Conwell Springs. In early morning on Sunday the 14th, a teenage girl found dead near Conwell Lake. The girl is survived by her mother, father, and younger brother. The funeral service will be held at Conwell Cemetery on the 21st of July. The notice is dated July 15th, 1975. Tragic story. I wonder why Grandpa saved this. You've reached the rain, residents. Leave a message after the beep. Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her firstborn. It's a boy. 
Thankfully, he looks nothing like his father. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you'd like to come and visit. And what about your little Kathy? Maybe she wants to see the baby. Well, anyways, I hope to see you soon. All the best. Bye. You people make me sick. We're never coming back. Don't call, don't write. If you ever try to contact us, I will call the police. Joseph, you there? It's me, Cocky. I, it happened to me too. And I'm not going to tell any of those bastards. They got it all wrong. You're the only one I trust now. Just call me back as soon as you can. Hmm. I wonder who this cocky is. dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Does the nickname Cocky mean anything to you? Sounds vaguely familiar. It reminds me of the aviator call signs Joseph and his friends gave one another. Joseph was vigilante. I can't count the number of times he got into trouble for breaking the rules. To this day, I have no idea how he always managed to land on his feet. <laughs> Must be hereditary, given the things I've gotten away with. Every time I wake up, I am genuinely surprised that I'm not in jail. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad, dear. But to get back to the subject, you don't have any idea of who this cocky is? I'm afraid not, but the Air Force might be a good place to start. Do you know anything about a young girl drowning around here? Oh, yes. It was the saddest thing. She was only 16. We never really knew the family. They preferred to keep to themselves. Do you remember the name of the girl or her family? I'm awfully sorry, dear. I I just can't recall. That's okay, Grandma. I was just wondering why Grandpa would have wanted to save this. Joseph was always affected by the tragedy of others. Perhaps he wanted to do something for the family. In any case, he didn't speak to me about it. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Grams, can you tell me anything about this picture? It looks awfully bright. Perhaps something was wrong with the camera. Yeah, maybe. I should try to figure something out tomorrow at the university. Look at this photo I found in the locked briefcase. Goodness, I haven't seen that picture in years. This was taken when Joseph was stationed at McConnell Air Force Base. That's him right there on the left. What about the other two? I don't remember the name of the smiling man in the back. The gentleman on the right was Joseph's best friend, Charles Wade. What can you tell me about Charles Wade? Well, I do know he has made quite a name for himself since he and Joseph went to war together. Apparently, he came up with some brilliant piece of engineering for the airplanes. They use it everywhere now. Any idea how to get in touch with him? I'm afraid not, dear. I haven't seen him for years. He and Joseph grew apart before you were born. Any particular reason for that? Oh, uh, not that I know of. Can you tell me anything about McConnell Air Force Base? It's not very far from Conwell Springs. Joseph was stationed there for some time during the war. I believe they're still training young pilots there today. So when did Grandpa enlist in the Air Force? 
Oh, it was barely past the honeymoon when Joseph left to fight in that terrible war, together with his best friend Charles and my brother Andrew. Those were nerve-wracking years. I was so worried, I thought I would burst. Every short visit from Joseph was a joy, but he kept going back to the front, to my great dismay. When I told Joseph about being pregnant with your father, he finally realized that enough was enough. He had done his duty. Shortly thereafter, he returned to a quiet farmer's life in this very house, helping your great-grandfather with the crops until he passed. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. These should come in handy when I need to make calls. Charles Wade in here. Was worth a shot, but being rich and famous and all, I guess he's got a hidden number. No hit for Wade Industries either, but it was kind of a long shot for them to have an office in this small county anyway. I should try to get a hold of him some other way. All right, got it. How can I help you? Hi. I was just wondering if you had time to answer a few questions. Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. Do you know anything about what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? I know that he was no longer stationed here at the base at that time. He'd left the Air Force decades earlier. But as a Conwell Springs citizen, sure, I've heard the rumors just like everybody else. How he was found by the sheriff, all messed up, walking out of the woods with some kind of unexplained brain damage. Any theory as to what he was doing out there? I'm afraid not, ma'am. But I'm positive that it had nothing to do with this base or our operations here. Okay. What can you tell me about his service at McConnell? Well, Joseph Rain is a legend around here. His pile of metals weighs more than my car. I was fortunate enough to meet him before he suffered his injury, and I must say, what an inspiring man. I'm positive that he would have made general if he'd stuck around. Any idea of why he quit? He looks so happy in the pictures from the war. Oh, your family, ma'am? Granddaughter. Well, then I'm sorry for your loss. I heard about his recent passing. Appreciate it, buddy. So, about him quitting. I shouldn't speak ill of the dead, but some say the war broke him. PTSD. Me? I don't think so. When I met him, he had this aura about him, like he wasn't afraid of anything. Maybe it was his guilt. He ended a lot of lives, but that's just me speculating. Gotcha. Thanks for the thoughts. I'm trying to get a hold of Charles Wade. Would you happen to know how to reach him? I'm sorry, ma'am, but Charles Wade is a public figure. He has explicitly asked us not to provide his contact details to anyone. Is there any way you can make an exception? I really need to talk to Mr. Wade. No can do. I can't really help you out unless you have some sort of official business. I do have official business. I'm Deputy Reagan. I'm calling from Conwell Springs Sheriff's Department. Nice try. You know what caller ID is? You can clearly see that you're not calling from the station. Goodbye. Damn, I can't pull that off if I call from here. Space, how can I help you? Hi. I was just wondering if you had time to... Sure thing, ma'am. What can you tell me about McConnell Air Force Base? This is one of the oldest Air Force bases in the U.S., established during World War I. The main purpose of it is to train fighter pilots. The McConnell Flight School is well-renowned all around the country. In the late 80s, the school started accepting a limited number of civilian applicants due to the high demand. Some of the most famous dogfighters in U.S. history, such as Ethan Fireball Jenkins, Joseph Vigilante Rain, and Brett Xavier Myers trained at this very base. Charles Wade, the great industrialist, did too. 
Some claim that many of his revolutionary ideas came from the former chief mechanic here, the late Niles Bloom. Interesting. Thanks for the history lesson. Do you recognize the aviator call sign, Cocky? Afraid not, ma'am. I know all the call signs here, and I'm positive it's not one of them. This isn't current, though. It might have been used as early as World War II. Oh, that's unfortunate. We don't keep any official records of call signs. The only option I can think of is to get a hold of somebody who was around back then. Any suggestions? The only person I can think of who is still alive would be Charles Wade. All right, thanks. My pleasure, ma'am. Anything else I can help you with? All right, that's all. Goodbye, ma'am. All right, this is the right date. Looks like her name was Lily Myers. I should try to get a hold of her family. I wonder what that kid is doing here all alone. Hey kid, all yourself. What are you doing? None of your business. Huh, I like you, kid. You're not here alone, right? Where's your mom? Oh, she's around. I don't see her. You must be blind or something. I'll go look for your mom, okay? Don't go anywhere. Whatever. Kid? Guess he found his mom. How can I help, boss? It's my mother's birthday this weekend. You'll have to get it. Hey. Hi there. Uh, could you distract Lenny again? Sure, I needed to puke again anyway. Good to know. Guess what? He's having some kind of fit in there. <sighs> Not again. Here we go again. Okay, there's got to be something in here about Lily Meyer's death. Okay, what do we have here? Hmm. Looks like somebody did a Virginia Wolf. I wonder if there's more to it. McConnell Air Force Base, how can I help you? Hi. I was just wondering if you had time to answer a few questions. Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. I'm trying to get a hold of Charles Wade. Would you happen to know how to reach him? 
I'm sorry, ma'am, but Charles Wade is a public figure. He has explicitly asked us not to provide his contact details to anyone. Is there any way you can make an exception? I really need to talk to Mr. Wade. No can do. I can't really help you out unless you have some sort of official business. I do have official business. I'm Deputy Reagan. I'm calling from Conwell Springs Sheriff's Department. Hmm. I can see that you're actually calling from the station. You say you're a cop? You don't sound like a cop. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It's just because I'm a woman, right? Women don't belong in law enforcement? Is that what you're saying? That's so sexist. Now that's hardly what... Do you have any idea what I have to go through every day? Nobody takes me seriously. The dirty looks, the sexual innuendos, I've... Relax, okay? I'll check the files. It's 555-7641. Thanks, buddy. Wade Residence. Hi, this is Kathy Rain. I'm calling for Charles Wade. He doesn't live here anymore. What's this about? What do you want with my father? I'd just like to have a quick word with Mr. Wade. It's about my grandfather, Joseph Rain. You're 20 years late, girl. My father has neither time nor energy to deal with you people. But... This conversation is over. Unless my father explicitly says he wants to talk to you, it's not going to happen. What a stuck-up, overclass witch. Well, she hasn't heard the last from me. I'm going to talk to that old man one way or another. Dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? I found out that the drowned girl's name was Lily Myers. Ring a bell? Oh, yes. Oh, how could I forget? Sue, Jack, oh, and their children, Lily and Nathan. Do they still live around here? Mother and son do. I, I see them in town from time to time. They live somewhere near the lake. But not the father. Jack, was it? No. He disappeared not long after Lily took her own life. I see. Do you know how I can reach the family? Not really, dear. Like I said, they tend to keep to themselves. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. She's been dead for two decades. I could try to find someone in her family, but I'll need a full name. All right, found an address. Yes? Can I help you? I hope so. My name's Rain. Kathy Rain. Joseph's girl. The one they sent away. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Well, what do you want? I had some questions about your daughter, Lily. Well, you know what? I don't have any answers, girl. 
Lily was precious, special. Lily died. That's all there is to it. My grandfather came to see you, right? To ask about her? Maybe he did. I don't see how that's any of your business. I'm not asking for much, Mrs. Myers. Then clearly you have no idea what it's like losing a child. Goodbye. Huh, <laughs> you again. That combination makes no sense. Huh, <laughs> you again. Care to join me for a smoke, Mrs. Myers? Well, um, I'm gonna have to think about it. What brand? Coralie Centers. Extra long. You got taste. I'll give you that. Well, I suppose one smoke can hurt. And that's when he realized it was his own bong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh, now that was a good one. <laughs> you know what, Kathy? You're okay. Sorry for being such a cranky old bag before. I get a short fuse when I run out of smokes. Now, that's an understatement. Good thing I had my morning smoke, otherwise we would have had a fist fight on our hands. <laughs> oh, it's getting chilly. Why don't we head inside? Sure, let's go. Now, this here's my boy, Nathan. He's special. Nate, be polite and say hello to Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi there, big guy. What you doing, big fella? Drawing. Oh, yeah? What are you drawing? The nice red man. You mean Santa? No, the nice red man. Now, what did I say about raising your voice at strangers? Sorry, Mama. I'll be nice. The red man is nice. Don't mind him. He gets so absorbed in his drawings thanks to that wild imagination of his. Just like his sister. So, you wanted to ask me about Lily? Yeah. Do you mind telling me what happened when my grandfather came to see you? Well, he knocked on my door a few years after Lily had passed away. I didn't know Joseph too well myself, but I'd heard of him and the good he'd done for the other people around here. So I let him in. He started asking a bunch of questions about Lily, like if I was absolutely sure that she, that it was suicide. And what did you say? The truth, that she was depressed and, and had been for a long time. I had no doubts about what happened. Hmm, all right, anything else? Well, he was weirdly curious about her paintings. Lily painted? Yep, that's one of hers right there on the wall. I see, it's beautiful. So, in what way was he curious? He asked if Lily had painted anything odd or strange. I didn't really get what he was after, but I, I let him have a look at her work. He spent some time browsing through them, and then he wrote something down on a piece of paper, thanked me, and left. Huh. Any idea of what he could have seen? Not really. I had the paintings all lined up. Could have been any of them. Would you mind showing them to me? Well, I would if I could, but this is the only one I have left. I sold the rest many years ago to this weirdo art collector. Does the name Charles Wade mean anything to you? Oh, he's some big-time businessman, ain't he? Yeah, he owns a large company. That about sums up what I know about the fella. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather? How he ended up in a wheelchair? Stroke, wasn't it? At least that's what I heard. Not necessarily. There are some divided opinions about it. Now that I think about it, that whole ordeal happened to him not long after he came here. How long? A week, maybe, at the most. 
Mind telling me what Lily was like, Sue? I'd be happy to. She was Nathan's older sister by two years. Lily was like any girl growing up, normal, happy, talking about school, boys and whatnot. And she and Nathan were close back then, always playing together in the woods. When Lily was 10, she started drawing, always doodling on just about anything she could get her hands on. We didn't have much, really, and so she used what she could. Once I even caught her scribbling on toilet paper. <laughs> on her 12th birthday, we gave Lily a thick sketchbook with an assortment of pencils. She was ecstatic. That was the happiest I'd ever seen her. From that day, drawing became her life. Eventually, her art teacher at school helped her to get started with oil painting. When Lily was 15, something changed. At first, I thought it was just usual teen angst, but no, this was something different. She started going out, disappearing for long periods of time. She locked herself in when painting. She never used to do that. I tried everything. Counseling, support groups, antidepressants, nothing worked. About a year later, she just gave up. And well, you know the rest. I'm sorry, Sue. That must have been unimaginable. Thanks, darling, but it's been a while now. I've learned to live with it. What do you do to support the two of you? Uh, a little bit of this and that. Got me some cash saved up, too. Nathan helps out when he can. What happened to your husband, if you don't mind me asking? You could say he didn't quite cope as well as I did with what happened to Lily. He got himself a death wish after what happened to her, started drinking and getting into all sorts of trouble. Five years left for him in the joint now, been there for 15. Man, that must be rough for you. Oh, we're doing just fine without him, aren't we, Nate? Mama takes good care of us. Mama sure does. So, tell me about Lily's art. It used to be about cheerful things. Landscapes, animals, bright colors. But as she drifted further into depression, she started painting horrible things, death and decay. And the last few pieces looked like something out of a nightmare. That's awful. Did Lily ever get any recognition for her art? Not really. Except from the guy I told you about who bought most of her paintings. Tell me about this art collector person. Rich? Fancy looking, in his 50s or thereabouts. I'd say he'd be around 70 now if he's still alive. He knocked on that door one day with a wad of cash in his hand. Five thousand dollars. He wanted everything that Lily so much as touched with a brush. Huh, did he say why? Nope, but I got the feeling that most of that dough was paid so he could avoid any questions. I took the money. I still had Nathan to support. Did the stranger give you his name? No. Well, his face was far from forgettable, though. Big nose, bright blue eyes, looked black Irish. He had a thick black mane, turning gray, no beard. All right, Sue. Thanks. Hey, Sue, do you recognize any of these men? Well, there's Joseph Frame. <laughs> Always so handsome. I had such a crush on him back in the day. And... No way. That's him. The man who bought the paintings. He's, he's much younger here, but there's no mistake in that hair and nose. Are you sure? I'm positive, little cat. That's the guy who walked into this cabin with five grand in cash. That's very helpful, Sue. Thanks. Ugh. Another question for the elusive Mr. Wade. So, Charles Wade was the one who bought those paintings from you? Yep. Like I said, he gave me five grand for Lily's paintings. If you want to know his reasons, you're going to have to ask the man himself. I think I'm going to head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back anytime. It's getting late. I should head back to the city.
Hey, you're still up. I was wondering when you'd show up. How did it go? Long story. I found out about some stuff that happened when I was a kid. Wow, what a mystery. So what's the plan now? I don't know yet, but I'll figure something out. What about this Charles Wade? You still haven't talked to him? And that strange bright picture you showed me? Those tapes? Listen, I know this guy. Eileen, relax. We can talk about it tomorrow, okay? Oh, it's way too late now. Oh, I couldn't possibly sleep now. I'm way too excited. Well, that makes one of us nighty. <sighs> Good night, cat. Hey, Kathy, wake up! Ugh, you are so lucky there are no sharp objects near this bed. Guess what? I got an idea. Please tell me it involves you taking a sabbatical. Haha, <laughs> so you found all this evidence, right? Pictures, tapes, and stuff? I guess. Why? Well, as you know, I have a computer. And I know this hacker guy, Dave, and... Oh, never mind. I'll just write you a note. You go back to sleep. Seriously, Eileen, sometimes I just marvel at how your brain works. I know, right? Are you sure you want to do this, Catherine? You still have time, if you think there's any chance you would change your mind. I'm sure, Doctor. Just get it out of me. But please, don't tell my mom. I'm sorry, but we have to do that. It's the law. Nobody has to know. Just pretend it slipped your mind. I have enough shit going on with her already. This would just add fuel to the fire. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. Fine. Let's just get this over with then. Right this way. Ugh, I hate that dream. <gasps> I guess Eileen went to class. I probably should too. Nah. Oh, what's this? Hi, cat. Feel free to use my computer while I'm away. My password is angel love, without the quotes. If you call my friend Dave at 555-2492, he can set you up with some software. I'll be back in a few hours, super psyched about the investigation. E. P.S. No gum on the keyboard, please. Remember the last time? Oh, please, like she actually uses the space bar? Shit, looks like she forgot to write down the username. Oh well, shouldn't be too hard to guess. I think it's just some combination of her first and last name. I'm Kathy. Eileen said to call you about some software. Ellie who? Eileen. Red hair, glasses, speaks so fast her gums ache. Oh, right. I thought her name was Errol. Figured it was kind of a weird name for a girl. You must have a hearing disorder. You must have a thinking disorder. Ha 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 ha, burn! Wow. Just wow. So, uh, the software? Oh, yeah. No, can't. Not really. Ugh, I knew she was full of shit. Nah, I mean, sure, I used to be able to get pirated software, but not anymore. There was this misunderstanding and my network privileges were revoked. Me and Clyde, the campus IT guy, don't really see eye to eye. We used to play bocce together and let's just say he is one sore loser. 
Can't you just patch things up with the guy? No way. He's such an ass. He even thinks TNG is better than the original series. He thinks the what is better than the what? I know, right? Can you believe that guy? Can't you just hack your way back in somehow? Isn't that what you do? He blocked the ethernet port in my room. I don't even have physical access. Don't you ever leave your room? Use a computer in the library or something. Aren't they connected to the network? No, there are cameras in there. Clyde is just waiting for me to make a move so he can get me expelled. You call yourself a hacker? Just use your brain for Christ's sake. Let's figure this out. Wow, you're so sassy, Nancy Drew. Well, okay, only an admin account can change the access port. The only way to even theoretically crack one would be if Clyde logged on to a machine to which we have unrestricted physical access. And... Ooh, I got an idea. I'm not gonna like this. Well, what you could do is intentionally crash your PC. That sounds especially stupid. Well, not crash it, crash it. Just crash it a little, then call Clyde. Clyde will come over to fix it. If you're lucky, then he'll log on to the network using his admin account. Afterwards, you can use some of my tools to find and crack the password locally. Worth a shot, I guess. Okay, you can come over and set it up. But no way. I have severe IBS. It just wouldn't work. IBS? What the hell is that? Uh, you seriously don't want to know. I'll have my buddy drop off everything you need. It's not rocket science. You do what I ask, and I'll get you some juicy software. Quid pro quo, Clary. Whatever, weirdo. We'll see. There was a floppy disk in there with a note taped to the back. One, boot your computer using the blue floppy. Two, use the corrupt MBR utility to crash the file system of the computer. Take the floppy out and reboot. Three, call Clyde at 555-8181, tell him your computer crashed and give him the error code on the screen. He'll come over and have a look. It shouldn't take too long for him to fix. Four, now comes the crucial part. You need to somehow make him log on with his admin account. Five, reboot and retrieve the admin credentials using the blue floppy. Six, reboot and log on using Clyde's admin account. Seven, look for some kind of tool to remotely open my ethernet port. Dorm B, room eight. That's it. And remember, if you mess up somewhere, just call Clyde, and he'll have to take care of it. It's his job, after all. IT, this is Clyde speaking. How can I help you? I, uh, kind of forgot my username. Well, it's real easy. It's the first letter of your first name, followed by your last name. So, Jane Doe would be J Doe. All right, sounds easy enough. Never mind. Suit yourself. Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. No use doing that before Clyde is logged in. All right, time for some expert help.
IT, this is Clyde speaking. How can I help you? Hi, I need you to come and fix my roommate's computer. What seems to be the problem? It won't start up. There's some kind of system failure with an error code on the screen. Probably a hard drive failure. Which room are you in? Dorm A, room 5. I'll be there in a few minutes. Thanks. Hey, Clyde from IT. Hi, come in. My, oh my, now how did this happen? I have no idea. It was like this when I started it up this morning. Hmm, let's have a look. And presto, good as new. That's perfect. Could, could you try logging on real quick just to make sure it works? You go ahead. I'll wait. Oh, now look what I did. For crying out loud. <sighs> Let me try to log in with my account. Okay, everything seems to be in order. I've unlocked your account. Please, try not to break anything else. Oh, I'll try. Phase one complete. Hey, it's me again, Kathy. I'm not sure what to do. Uh, can't talk right now. In the middle of the game. Douche. All right, that should do it. Yeah. Guess what? You got it? Hang on. Oh man, I could kiss you! Ahem, figuratively that is. I am so gonna get back at Clyde now. What are those admin credentials, by the way? Not telling, buddy. Saving those for a rainy day. Huh, I suppose this nice floppy I prepared for you stays in my room then. Sure, then I'll just have to log back on and click that pretty little lock icon again. 
No, this is just emotional blackmail. Quid pro quo, Dave. Fine. I'll have it dropped off at your room. Goddamn, you're like a she Clyde. A Clyde Eck. Huh. That is the worst insult I have ever heard. Later, Dave. I'll just get rid of these notes now. I don't need them anymore. There was a floppy disk inside. is that ball lightning I'll print the whole picture for now but there's probably more to find that shape has to be significant somehow idea, but I should probably zoom in all the way. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's all there is to find in this picture. Okay, Erica Wade, let's see if we can't motivate you to hear me out.
the hell? Calm down, Kathy. Think. Just think. It has to be some sick joke left in the program by Dave. Yeah, that must be it. He is one twisted fuck. I'll just get rid of the original picture now, since I have the restored version anyway. Strange. Now that I look at them, the lights remind me of something I picked up yesterday. It's some advanced scanner thingy. It can scan pictures, tapes, all sorts of stuff. Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her first spawn. You've reached the Rain residence. Leave a message after the beep. I don't think I need to manipulate this particular voice recording. Almost. Just a few more tweaks. That should work. message should now be at the end of the original tape. It's some advanced scanner thingy. It can scan pictures, tapes, all sorts of stuff. It's some... Mm. 
Not right now. I have the forged message ready for playback. Your father. Call Kathy Rain and give her what she wants. Bye. You've reached Erica Wade. Leave a message after the beep. Hi, Erica. This is Kathy Rain. I spoke to your father. He asked me to get in touch with you and said he would call ahead. You can reach me at 555-8352. Bye. Your move, Erica. Oh, hello there, Mildred. Hi yourself, Agatha. What? How'd you... Oh, never mind. I know your social security number, too. Oh, God. Soon you'll start stealing my clothes and then walk around and then pretending to be me. Who says I haven't done that already? Okay, I admit, that's pretty funny. So, anyway, how did things go with Dave? Pretty good. I had to sabotage your computer. You had to what? Oh, chill, Audi. It was just a tiny little thing. I just needed an excuse for the IT guy to come by so I could steal his password. Clyde? But he's so nice. Why do you want to steal his password? It's a long story. And then I used Mr. Wade's synthesized voice to craft this fake message, which I left on her answering machine. Now that's some out of the box thinking. Yep, just might be silly enough to work. Yeah, anyhow, feel free to keep using my computer. I need to do some homework anyway. Sounds good. I'm sure I found everything in the picture of those lights, but I have a nagging feeling that they're connected to something I found yesterday. church logo looks pretty similar to the smoky lights. I might have to visit them after all. Hey, E, come check this out. Hmm? Wow, they're hypnotic. Looks like a will-o'-the-wisp. You know, the spirit of the forest. Now, that's just silly, Eileen. There has to be a more reasonable explanation for them. Hey, there's nothing silly about forest spirits. You should talk to Meadow, my Wiccan friend. She's really opened my eyes about these sort of things. Isn't it your Christian duty to consider people like her to be heathens? Oh, I doubt she could ever be more of a heathen than you are. Huh, I guess you've got a point. So anyway, is there anything I can do to help? Well, my side of the room is starting to get a bit messy. There's always that. <laughs> I meant with the investigation, silly. I guess you could try to find out more about these lights. Maybe figure out where that picture was taken? I know exactly where to start. Good. I'm gonna get some food now before I pass out. Okie dokie. I'll grab my books and get cracking. Alright, see you in a bit. Any progress with the search? Yeah, I was able to identify that flower. It's called the Red Scythe, or Rosia falcus. I discovered that there was a small nature reserve near Conwell Springs, which was established in 89. The Red Scythe is on their list of endangered plants. I made a photocopy of the botany book page in case you want it later. That's something. I should go check it out. Maybe I can narrow down the place where that picture was taken. And, uh, good work, Eileen. Happy to help. So what... Oh, hang on. I'll go get that. 
Okie dokie. Hello? This is Erica Wade calling for Kathy Rain. Speaking? Miss Rain, but this is terribly awkward. I realize now how rude I was before. I wanted to apologize and ask if there is anything I can do. Apology accepted. You can start by answering a few questions. Very well. Do you know anything about the Church of the Holy Trinity? It's the one and only church in Conwell Springs. I was baptized there, and I married my husband there. Anything out of the ordinary about them? Oh, not really. They seem like a typical church to me. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather that night in 81? Not really, no. But what I do know is how it destroyed father. It did? Oh, yes. The two of them were great friends once. And when Joseph was hurt, they hadn't been talking for some time. Father always hoped they would be able to reconnect one day. He kept putting it off, believing they had time. But in the end, it never happened. So, what were things like back when they were still good friends? Oh, they were like peas in a pot. <laughs> always sharing their war stories and, and laughing together. In a way, Joseph became the uncle I never had. He was around a lot when Father went out on business trips. But later on, I, I even met you a few times, when you were just a baby. I don't remember any of that. Oh, no matter, you were so little then. Erica, I have to ask, why were you so defensive on the phone earlier when I tried to reach out? Oh, I don't know, Kathy. Our families haven't been in touch for a long time. I don't remember exactly when it happened, but we all started drifting apart. My guess is that it had to do with Father's growing wealth. Friendship needs common ground, and we started living in different worlds. What happened to your grandfather was the final nail in the coffin. Father just couldn't bear seeing him like that, neither alive nor dead. What do you know about Lily Myers? She was a young artist who lived somewhere in Conwell Springs. Killed herself, if I recall correctly. Dreadful thing. But other than that, not much. We never knew the family. What can you tell me about Mr. Wade? My father is a great man. He has so many ideas, so much left to realize, which makes it hurt so much more to see him like this. See him like what? The illness and everything, of course. Right. Yeah, it must be hard. Oh, yes, indeed. I wish he wouldn't be so stubborn with his treatment. He could go to any state-of-the-art hospital, but insists on being treated in that backwater clinic in Conwell Springs. The community clinic in the middle of town? Yes. It's like he's given up and is just waiting for the inevitable to happen. What do you know about Lily Meyer's art? Oh, that little girl had a twisted mind, let me tell you that. Oh, my father used to have a few pieces of hers in his collection. Horrible things. I couldn't understand why he ever decided to procure them in the first place. You say, used to have. Did he get rid of the paintings? Oh, either that, or, or he put them in storage somewhere. I haven't seen them for years. I never bothered to ask him why. Glad to be rid of them, quite frankly. Do you recognize the nickname Cocky? It may be an Air Force call sign. I can't say that I do. Father had many friends in the Air Force, but no one I can recall by that name. Okay, that's all I needed. Very well. Feel free to call back if you have any more questions. All right. Wade is in Conwell Springs. He's being treated in the clinic. That was Erica Wade. Her father is being treated at the clinic in Conwell Springs. Being treated? He's sick? Looks that way. Small miracle they managed to keep it out of the press. Yeah, I suppose you are returning to talk to him? It'll have to be tomorrow. It's quite late for that now. I suppose. Scrabble? Oh, you're so on. I will crush you. Turning your pawn into a queen, is that the plan, buddy boy?
You know me. I'm always playing the long game, old friend. That may be, but you're running out of pieces. First you lost your queen, then your knight. All that matters is the king. Delusional as always. The king is dead. Long live the king. Check. Good morning, sunshine. Please tell me I dreamt all those Scrabble losses last night. Three times in a row. Rub it in, why don't you? I'll just go strangle myself now. Oh, you. Don't be a sore loser. So what's the plan today? Mr. Wade is the plan. I'll head for the clinic right away. While I'm at it, I'm gonna check out the church and the nature reserve. Okie dokie. What can I do to help? Why don't you continue looking into the lights? I have a feeling they're the key to solving all of this. You could also look up the history of Conwell Springs in general, see if anything unusual has been going on. I'll get right on it. Great, thanks E. Oh, by the way, don't forget to check out the page I gave you about the red scythe. It's a pretty interesting flower. Right, yeah. All right, I'm off. Peace out, E. Okie dokie. Good luck and see you later. We meet again, Mr. Homeless Guy. Homeless? That's the worst thing I ever heard of, and totally untrue. So, what's up with the trash can? Digging for treasure? Well, uh, I'm just going through a rough patch. By the way, you owe me ten bucks. Nah, you agreed to seven. You're busting my balls here. Better get those balls checked out in this clinic, then. So cold! Like a stake through the heart! Hmm. What do they call you, anyway? Gober. Everyone calls me Gober. All right. I'm Kathy. Pleasure to meet you. So, what's your story, anyway? My story? Yeah. Don't all bums have a story? For your information, this is all just a dry streak in my showbiz career. Is that so? I don't recognize you at all. I used to have more hair. That, I actually believe. Come on, man! Frankie Gold is my stage name. Surely you must have heard of me. Not really, no. Oh, come on. I have starred in dozens of Hollywood movies. The Silence of the Lambert? Jacob's Bladder? The Usual Surprises? Natural Ball Killers? Not ringing any bells. Kids these days, no appreciation for quality cinema. Breaks my heart. So, tell me about this acting career of yours. What about it? Tell me about The Silence of Lambert. Lawrence Lambert, a real estate agent, suddenly turns mute overnight. For weeks, he tries to communicate with customers using a self-invented sign language, only to realize that true love needs no communication at all. He marries his housekeeper, who only knows two words in English, yes and clean. In the end, Lawrence dies of a heart attack in the arms of his lovely wife, Consuelo Lambert Vasquez. Based on a true story. I'm not sure I want to know what Jacob's bladder is about, but I'm gonna ask anyway. Jacob's Bladder, the tragic story of Jacob Cobb, a schizophrenic man who forms an imaginary romantic relationship with his bladder. During long and joyful monologues on the can, he starts referring to his nether regions by the name of Jenny. Sadly, before Jacob has a chance to elope with his sweetheart, he gets committed to an asylum due to increasingly erratic behavior. After a big fight with his paramour, Jacob refuses to pee for a week, and he dies from a ruptured bladder. 
give me the rundown on the usual surprises. A lighthearted comedy taking place during the surprise birthday party of a 34-year-old Sid McBacon. The story is told from eight different perspectives to keep the audience guessing who the protagonist actually is. The movie ends with the biggest surprise of them all. Sid suddenly dies of an epileptic seizure. I guess it's more of a dark comedy. Natural bald killers? It's a dystopian vision of the future where people are valued by the quality of their hair. The protagonist, Eddie Zephyr, turns bald in high school. One day, he has simply had enough of all the teasing and the bullying, and he completely snaps and heads out on a scalping spree in search of the perfect head of hair. Eddie makes his way to Mexico for an illegal hair transplant. However, he has an adverse reaction to the anesthesia, and he dies on the operating table. Why do you always die at the end of your movies? Typecasting. Oh, never mind. Not the culture type. I understand. I need to ask you a few questions. Sounds serious. Ask away. I don't need to show him that. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? I most certainly do! What? Tell me! Are you sure you want to know? Not everyone can handle the truth. Oh, just spit it out! Okay, here we go. Ready? Abducted by aliens. Ah, <sighs> I should have known better. Oh, I saw it, man. A big, huge light. I was a bit drunk at the time, but I had my reasons. My wife had just left me, taking the dog, not to mention I was being conscripted for the war. But I'm telling you, those goddamn aliens took him and they experimented on him. And that's why he was so messed up when they put him back. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to stop you there. Open your mind, man! Okay, that's enough serious questions for now. Alrighty! Okay, I'm off. Bye! <laughs> Sorry about that, buddy. Excuse me, nurse. Hey, nurse. <sighs> yeah. They don't pay you much, huh? No shit. What do you want? I'm here to see Charles Wade. Never heard of him. Anything else? Bullshit. I know he's here. Listen, it's okay. I'm a friend of the family. No, you're not, and I said he's not here. Don't make me call security. What a bitch. I need to get rid of her somehow. Hey, doofus. Oh, hi! So, how good an actor are you? The best! The very best! You know, that nurse in there, she said she loved you in all those movies, and that she always wished you'd give her a live performance. I knew it! She always gave me these strange looks. I thought it was contempt, but her face must just be cramping up from shyness. Yeah, that's definitely it. She'd love to see you act, I'm sure. I'm gonna have to oblige. Which movie do you think she'd like the best? Probably... The Silence of Lambert? Oh, I'm gonna be loud! I have so many things left to say. 
my chest. No, it can't be. Hold me. I don't want to. Thank you, thank you. Show. You've been a great audience. That wasn't really an electrifying performance. I'll have to intervene somehow. Hey, doofus. Oh, hi! Hey, how about another show? Sure, any suggestions? How about the usual surprises? Business as usual. I can't believe you guys did all this for me. You know, I, uh, what's the smell? Bacon? Oh, Bobby, my head hurts. Nurse, he's seizing. Oh, shit. Man, I feel like a total jackass. I'll have to make it up to the poor guy later. Nah, I don't see any reason to break this computer. It's all right, Claude. Understood, sir. So, you managed to find me. I did. Well, let's get this over with then. How do you want your pictures? Shall I get some tubes to fill my face with? Will that suffice for your front page? I'm no journalist. Well, not yet anyway. Ah, she's but a cub. So, you're hoping for your big break. Surely this must be worth an internship at one of the big papers. Do you want me to call Thompson at the Times and get it over with? I still play golf with him every once in a while. That's not what this is about. It's personal. Sounds serious. Perhaps I should ask Claude to produce his gun. You know, Charles, the person most likely to be harmed by a gun tends to be its owner. Very true. That's something the Japs who captured me learned the hard way. Did my grandfather bail you out then too, or was that one of the few times where he didn't save your sorry ass? Hold on there. Explain yourself. You're willing to listen to something other than your own voice? I'm stunned. <sighs> I'm Kathy Rain. Joseph was my grandfather. Now I remember. You were at the funeral. I was. You were late. I needed my morning smoke. Besides, it's not like Grandpa was going anywhere. <laughs> oh, just.
Just look at her, Claude. She's absolutely fearless. That's Joseph's blood running through her veins. She certainly has a smart mouth, sir. I must say, you have me intrigued, Kathy. What can this old man help you with? Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather in 81? I wish I did, Kathy. You must know I did everything in my power to help. How do you think Mary Elizabeth could afford all that expensive treatment? MRIs, neurologists, say what you will about Joseph. But he was never rich. Strange. Grandma never mentioned that to me. She's just too proud. At first she refused. She was convinced that I had an agenda, that there were strings attached. And were there? Don't be silly. Despite all that had happened, I still loved Joseph dearly. I wanted to help. People from places like this have a deeply rooted mistrust in the rich, passed on for generations. In her eyes, I had become one of them. So that's all you know about the whole affair? Are you implying that there's more to know? I left the diagnosis to the professionals. Mrs. Rain accepted the healthcare, but asked me to stay out of everything else. So I did. I see. What can you tell me about your friendship with Grandpa? Joseph was the best friend I ever had. We grew up together. Married our high school sweethearts together. Went to war together. I can't even begin to count the number of times he's saved my life. I repaid the favor once or twice. But he came up ahead, no doubt. So, when did you two lose touch? I heard that something happened between you and him. What was it? <sighs> the truth is, Brian Rain happened. Sharon Evans happened. My parents? Yes. They ruined everything with their vile, destructive behavior. I couldn't have that around my daughter or my newborn grandson. Joseph was naive. He believed that anyone could be helped, that anyone could be reasoned with, given a chance. He was just uh, too good, bless him. He should have been harder on Brian, more strict. So our family started drifting apart. Eventually my company grew much too large for this little town, and we moved on. Not long after that, your grandfather ended up in that wheelchair. That marked the end of our friendship, for obvious reasons. Do you recognize the call sign, Cocky? Would be strange if I didn't, since I was the one who coined it. It belongs to a fellow named Jimmy Cochran. He was a coward, really. The nickname is somewhat of a bad joke. Perfect. Thanks. Tell me about Jimmy Cochran. Is he still alive? In a literal sense. He's been held in a mental institution for years. Let me guess. Since 81? Either 82 or 83. I'm fairly certain it was early. Do you remember the name of the institution? Something starting with an E. Uh, Emerson, Everton, or similar. Ingstrom? Ingstrom Psychiatric Hospital? Yes, that's the one. You know the place, Kathy. I do. My mother is in there. Sharon Evans? I had her committed about a year ago. I see. It must have taken a lot of courage to do that, Kathy. Mothers have a lot of power over us. More than most of us care to admit. I guess so. Do you know why Jimmy ended up in there? Some obsessive compulsive syndrome. He became fixated with circles and started hurting himself, trying to scratch the circles out of his head. Creepy. I wonder what set him off. I think I'll check the place out tomorrow. Too late to head back to the city now. You bought a number of paintings by Lily Myers. Why? I'm known to dabble in art from time to time. Martha, my wife at the time, was enamored with the paintings. I believe she first saw them at the high school which the Myers girl attended. Anyway, after the poor girl killed herself, 
I bought the painting speculatively. When a young artist with any talent to speak of commits suicide, it can be a wet dream of certain connoisseurs. Shortly after procuring the art, I had it valued by an expert who determined that the value was three times the amount I bought it for. Today, I'm sure I would have made my money back tenfold or more if it wasn't for the art theft. What art theft? There was a burglary at the mansion I used to own here in town. It was all over the local news at the time. Well, shit. Eloquently put. You bought a number of paintings by Lily Myers. Why? I'm known to dabble in art from time to time. I believe anywhere when a young shortly today. What art? There was a b well, sh eloquent. Can you tell me about the art theft? Well, somebody broke in, stole the paintings, and got out. Fairly clumsy job. Lots of broken windows. The strangest thing was, was that I had a Monet, a Rembrandt, and two paintings by Picasso, untouched. But every single painting by an unknown local artist, gone. That can't be a coincidence. Agreed. Somebody wanted those paintings badly. I assume there was an investigation. Yes, Sheriff Truman came by with his deputy a few hours later, but they didn't have much luck. They found a few hairs, which turned out to be from Raffles, the family dog. Some stunning police work right there. Indeed. There was a single witness, though, who said he could make out multiple burglars leaving the scene of the crime, but nothing more than that. So, I take it the case was closed? Yes. I honestly didn't care much one way or the other, given the fact that my most expensive pieces were safe and sound. I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff about the matter, if that's okay with you. Certainly. I'll call ahead and instruct him to give you everything you need. That'd be great. Thanks, Charles. Anytime. But I'm curious. What's your interest in the paintings? I've learned that my grandfather went to Sue and asked to see them right before he had his injury. Is that so? Strange. Thanks, Charles. That's all I need for now. You're welcome, Kathy. Come back anytime. Well, this is it. This is where the picture was taken. I'm not sure what I expected to find here. I need to clear my head. What the? We've met before, haven't we? Nope, just no. I'd remember a creepy bald dude with makeup. Memories can deceive, Kathy. Dig deeper. Who are you? How do you know my name? You told me, remember? I feel strange. Am I dreaming? It's the mending I will try to facilitate. You're not real. I'm lying asleep in my bed right now. Focus, Kathy. Listen to the drowned girl. You mean Lily? What about her? She's the anomaly, the missing refrain, the convergence point of things past and events yet to happen. Dial down the metaphors a notch, would you, Mr. Kafka? I get enough of that shit in English class. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't disappoint. I'm glad, given how much trouble I went through to be here. You see, my name was taken from me, so I claimed a color in its stead. The next time we meet, you'll know the exact hue of red. 
You're on the right path, Kathy. Follow your grandfather, and everything will work out in the end. Wait, what? How did I get here? Am I going crazy? Am I turning into mom? Hello? Creepy bald guy. Guess no one's home. What's this? A bald man dressed in red. Oh, creepy. It's you again. Come on in. No Nathan today? Nah, haven't seen Nate all day. Probably out in the woods. Question, Sue. She. Do you know who the Red Man is? Oh, that's just Nate's imaginary friend. The Red Man has been around ever since my boy was little. I see. So there's no actual person in town he could be referring to? <laughs> no way! According to Nathan, the Red Man hasn't changed in 30 years. The Red Man actually exists. I met him in the forest. What? That's crazy talk. Stop kidding around. I am not in the mood. Did you know that somebody stole Lily's paintings from Wade? Huh? I knew he got robbed a few years back, but I, I thought he still had them all. I don't need to ask her about that. I don't need to ask her about that. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back anytime. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? If you must. Do you know anything about the art theft in the Wade estate? Um, yes. Mr. Wade phoned ahead about that. Lenny! Yes, boss? Get the report from the burglary in the Wade estate back in 86? On it, boss. There you go, Kathy. Thanks, buddy. I gotta find this gold farb guy. Maybe he knows more about the burglary.
Oh, hello, dear. Glad to see you again so soon. Hi, Grandma. I just thought I'd drop by. Sure, hon. Stay as long as you'd like. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Does the name Franklin Goldfarb mean anything to you? Oh, that poor man. He used to be an upstanding citizen, you know. Now he's constantly drinking and keeps babbling on about that imaginary acting career of his. Sad thing. Do you know where I can find him? He's homeless, dear. Lost his job a few years ago and never really got back on his feet. Okay, now I know who you're talking about. Thanks, Grandma. Looks like I'm gonna have to have a chat with Goober. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. I need a word, Miss Mendez. Wait, how do you know my name? It's written on that board behind you, genius. You have the eyesight of a bald eagle or something? Eh, what can I say? I'm a freak of nature. What happened to Goober, anyway? Who? The guy who had the... seizure? Oh, he ran off somewhere. Kept babbling about a religious near-death experience. Okay, thanks. Hello, Father. Greetings, my child. I'm glad you decided to come here. Yeah, but just so you know, I'm not here to join your church or anything. Oh, I would never assume that. Good. So, with that out of the way, I have some questions. Anything you need. I'm Isaac Price. Kathy. Kathy Rain, but I'm guessing you figured that out already. I did. Rumors spread quickly around here. So, how can I be of service? Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather in 81? It was the work of the devil, I'll say that much. Joseph was a kind man. He did not deserve such a fate. You heard my speech at the funeral, Kathy. I meant every word. He was a great man who did much good for this community. Did you know him personally? In a way. He and my father did charity work together. Joseph was around a lot when I was young. They collaborated on a few different projects for the homeless and for the troubled youth, among other things. So my grandfather was a member of the church? I wouldn't say that, no. He was a friend of the church, but he wasn't a religious man. He believed only in philanthropy. That being said, Joseph was the person who convinced me to become a priest. Really? Oh yes, I was a teenager back then, full of rebellion, every fiber of my being wanting to distance myself from my father. Joseph made me realize my sinful pride and showed me how I should follow my heart regardless of what others might think. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Care to tell me the history of the church? I'd be happy to. The story is a fascinating one. This church was founded by my father, William T. Price, in the 70s. Back then, he made his living as a traveling salesman and was driving through this area as he'd done so many times before. However, this day was different. My father held dark thoughts in his mind. He was angry, thinking of evil deeds, even considering swerving off the road into a rock and ending it all. Then suddenly, divine intervention three bright lights appeared. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the sign of God. This epiphany was the moment my father had been waiting for. He sold all of his belongings and took me and my brother to live with him here in Conwell Springs. Soon thereafter, he built this church and started gathering followers. They began to refer to him as Father Bill. I take it that window up there resembles what he saw when he had this epiphany? Indeed. The stained glass window depicts the Holy Trinity as witnessed by my father. 
do you know exactly when or where this event took place? Why do you ask? Oh, just curious. It's a captivating story. Well, it was in the spring of 1971, but my father never told anyone where. Okay, so what happened then? People flocked to Father Bill. He started teaching, writing scripture. The church flourished and continued to grow all the way up until his sudden death in 1983. That's when I stepped in to take leadership of the church. I take it that the church started declining after the death of Father Bill? Uh, yes, naturally so. With such a magnetic personality, he was irreplaceable. But I assure you, the church is still very much thriving. Looks kind of empty to me. It's not really our peak hours. What's up with you handing out pamphlets at funerals, then? Trying to reel people in at a weak moment? I'm going to assume you meant no disrespect, child. I'm simply providing divine guidance when it's needed the most. I think I need to ask him about a few more things before I go. Does the name Lily Myers mean anything to you? It does. I was a substitute teacher in her high school for some time before I was ordained. Really? Did you know her personally? We weren't close. I only knew her as much as a teacher would know any student. All right, so how did she seem toward the end? For one, she started skipping school a lot. And when she did show up, she was absent-minded and moody. She always looked depressed and hunched down like she had a whole world on her shoulders. Any idea of what caused this change? Not a clue. All I know is that when she returned from that last summer break, she was a whole different person. Do you know who Jimmy Cochran is? I don't recognize that name, no. Do you know anything about an art theft at the Wade Estate in the 80s? I have just a vague memory of reading about it in the paper. This may sound strange, but have you heard of or seen a strange man dressed in red? Only our Lord and Savior Jesus. Surely his rags were drenched in blood as he lay upon the cross. That's not what I meant. Uh, I mean someone here, in Conwell Springs. Are you joking? I haven't seen a person like that, no. Do you know who Franklin Goldfarb is? I'm afraid not, my child. That's all I need for now, Father. May the Lord shine his light on you. Nah, that God old fast. Yep, I totally went there. Hello again, Goober. You again? Are you stalking me, girl? You pop up everywhere I go. I'll try to tone down the charm, but I can't promise anything. Huh, yeah, you're quite the charmer. I know. I just said that, man. Listen, I feel kind of bad about the electrocution. Oh, that's what it was. What a cherry on top of my stellar performance. Yeah, it was... Uh, pretty convincing. So what brings you to the house of God? Come to repent? I'm afraid that ship has long since sailed, buddy. I had a few things I wanted to ask you about, though. Shoot, Missy! Your real name is Franklin Goldfarb, right? Oh, nobody calls me that. Regardless, I know for a fact that you were a witness to a burglary a few years back at the Wade Estate. Yeah, what about it? Why don't you tell me what you saw exactly? I heard the alarm go off, glass break, and then I saw three guys running away, carrying a bunch of stuff. What did they look like? It was dark. I don't know. They were definitely three big, bulky guys. They, uh... They what? Oh, nothing. That's it. Didn't see anything else. Bullshit. Spit it out. Well, one of those guys dropped his ring when running away. I sort of bonded. it. A ring? What kind of ring? Platinum with an inscription. Two letters. B... something. Man, I don't remember. My photographic memory stopped working in 1979. Which pawn shop was that? Pete's Pawning and Plumbing. It closed down a long time ago, though. Owner left town. There's a coffee shop back there now. Too bad. Guess that's a dead end. Thanks anyway. Didn't I see two letters fitting that description recently? Not on a building. It was something small. Did the inscription on the ring look anything like this? Wow, actually exactly like that. 
Any idea what BH stands for? Beehive, bed high, big head. <sighs> okay, that's all for now. See ya. Hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Do you recognize the acronym BH? It's on Dad's lighter. Yes, dear. It means the black hats. They're those ruffians on motorcycles whom your father is associated with. Oh, his biker gang. That makes sense. What can you tell me about the Black Hats? I refuse to talk about those hoodlums. They turned your father into a horrible person. You should stay far away from them, Kathy. They're awful people, just awful. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? What can you tell me about the Black Hats? They've caused us trouble from time to time, but they've been kind of quiet lately. We put a few of their captains in the slammer over the years, but we never managed to find enough dirt on their leader. Bo Brunson. Big Bo. Do you know where I can find them? Yeah, hold on. Let me just find a map. Got it. Thanks. Well, gotta go. See ya. Sweet bud incoming! Like hell I am, I am nobody's property. You sure? Doesn't she look like a sweet butt? Little slut? I think she does. Step off, creep. Or what? You tell your daddy on me? You better learn quickly, asshole. Back the fuck off. Oh, I love it when they play hard to get. Let go of me! No time for that now! <laughs> what the hell's going on out here? Nothing, Prez. Just having a bit of fun with this gash here. I suggest you leash that dog of yours. For fuck's sake, Prospect, not again. Get the hell out of here. Sorry, boss, I'll go. Fuck, that hurt you, cunt. He'll be disciplined for that. He better be. I take it you're Bo? I am. And who are you, darling? Kathy Rain. Bullshit. She lives in the city with her deranged mother. Who are you, really? Did the Vandals send you? No, they didn't. I am Kathy Rain. Prove it, then. Well, I would, but I left my ID back home. <laughs> that's convenient. I think I've wasted enough time with you. I need to figure out some proof. This proof enough for you? I'll be damned. That's Brian's lighter, all right. Sorry about the paranoia. We've had some problems with the vandals lately. I get it. Can't be too careful. 
So, that's your ride out there. Corley Motors, right? 78? 76. You got the same taste as your old man. He always rolled Corleys. Probably the only thing he and I have in common. <laughs> Did you set up those mods yourself? Looks custom made for your uh, small frame. Yeah, took some time to get the measurements right. I imagine so. Girls like you don't often ride heavy bikes. I'm not most girls. Ain't that the truth. Most girls don't just waltz into places like this either. I guess you'd know. Anyway, I had some questions for you in the club. Go ahead then. Your old man was a good brother, so I'll indulge you for now. Tell me, how long have you been the president of this club? Fifteen years now, give or take. VP for ten before that. Good. Then you can tell me why you stole Lily Meyer's paintings from Charles Wade in 86. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but I'd recommend you be careful with wild accusations like that. Oh, cut the bullcrap. I know it was you. I did some digging and found evidence pointing to the club. Is that so? Better be a good girl and present it to the sheriff, then. I couldn't care less about ratting you out, Bo. I just need to know what you did with the art. I have no intention of discussing your delusions as if they were facts, girl. Don't make me tell you again. All right, I'm gonna hit the road. Right on. I have some business to take care of, but make yourself at home. Thanks, Bo. See you around. Hey, Brian's girl. Yeah? I overheard you. I'm in it. Hey. The boss man isn't usually that grumpy. He's got a lot on his mind. But I think I may know of a way to loosen him up. I'm all ears, buddy. Well, Bo and Brian are the double B's, as we used to call them. <laughs> they used to have this drink together. Brian came up with it. He called it a bloodier Mary. Hmm, sounds like my kind of drink. Yeah, it's basically a Bloody Mary, but with pig blood instead of tomato juice. I take that back. Gross. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's just a Bloody Mary, but with a special ingredient added to it. If you say that special ingredient is blood, I will literally punch you. <laughs> no. Brian refused to tell anyone what it was. He only made it for special occasions. It's probably something uncommon, like a rare herb or some kind of expensive spice. So let me guess, if I can produce this drink for Bo, you think he would help me out? It'll make him remember Brian, which should go a long way. He hasn't had that drink since your old man disappeared. Brian was like a son to him. The boss would have died for him back in the day. If you could recall the good times with your father, he might change his mind. I guess it could be worth a try. Wait, why are you helping me? You're Brian's kid. That means you're family. We take care of family. Well, how was that drink compared with a regular Bloody Mary? Tasted a bit more like pepper and had a punch to it. It usually gave some pretty nasty hangovers. Oh, if you had a lot of them, you'd hallucinate some crazy shit. Pretty wild. Trippy. Thanks. You're welcome, darling. Sorry, endangered flower, but I, uh, I really need to make a drink. I'd like a Bloody Mary. Coming right up. Oh, and add this, will you? Just something I like for flavor. Put it in a blender. Whatever you say. One Bloody Mary. Enjoy. Thanks, buddy. 
The club will cover that, Jose. Sure thing, VP. Thanks again, Emmett. You got it. Hey, Bo. I've got something for you. I recognize that smell. You found your dad's recipe. Something like that. Man, is this a trip down memory lane? I keep expecting Brian to walk in here any second. You know, all this nostalgia is making me remember how much I really owe your old man. Yeah? Yeah, so here's the deal. In 86, Carl, my VP at the time, came to me and said he had a job lined up for the club. Some guy had offered him good dough for stealing a bunch of paintings from a mansion. He needed two brothers for the job. I was busy with other things at the time, so I gave my permission as long as the club got the usual cut. He returned a week later with a nice wad of cash. I didn't realize it was Wade he had knocked off until I read the paper. If I had known that, I'd advised against it. Wade is a powerful man with friends in city council. There's no reason to piss him off. Got it. So what do you know about the guy who hired you for the job? Not much. Carl said it was some bearded preacher. Whoa, Isaac from the Church of the Holy Trinity? Could be. I don't know who that is. It was a priest. I know that much. Thanks, Bo. I'm going to follow up on this right away. That's it? You're not going to ask me about what happened to your old man? Not even curious? I couldn't give two shits about that asshole. Bullshit. Don't expect anyone to believe you're that angry with someone you don't give two shits about. Either he's dead or he abandoned me. Do any of those options look appealing to you? They don't, but you should know that no one from the club had anything to do with it. I meant it when I said Brian was a good brother. He had no enemies here. Not then, and not now. Comforting to hear, Mr. President. Shut up and listen, girl. I'm trying to tell you something. Brian used to talk about heading to Mexico, about riding off into the sunset and getting away from all his newfound responsibilities. And I think part of him was serious. You deserve to know that there's a chance he's still out there somewhere. Sure. Let's hope that bastard is living it up somewhere. <sighs> Just take care of yourself, you hear? You too. That day went by fast. I think I'm going to ask if I can stay the night at Grandma's. Hello, sweetheart. Hey, Grandma. It got kind of late. Would it be okay if I stay the night? Of course, dear. Have a seat. I'll make you something to eat. Oh, you're the best. I'm starving. Do you see? You are both unwanted, both discarded. Good. Lick the flames, buddy boy. Lick the flames and feel the hatred burn. Lily's painting burning, and the kid from the cemetery. It's got to mean something. Oh, good morning. Hi, Kathy. What the... morning? This is... wow, this is quite the surprise. You have such a lovely friend, dear. We've been chatting all morning. Oh, I have no doubt. She's quite the talker, this one. You sleep even longer here than you do back home. Oh, gee, must be the blissful lack of distractions here, E. Can I talk to you for a sec, outside, alone? Okie dokie, if your grandmother doesn't mind being left all by herself for a while. Sure. You go ahead, children. I'll be right here if you need me. wrong with you, E? I don't know. Was a single morning devoid of Eileen too much to ask? 
I'm frankly surprised that I'm allowed bathroom breaks by myself with you in the same building. I was super bored. Besides, you never got back home last night. I wanted to make sure you were okay. Well, as you can plainly see, I'm not a corpse. You could be a very convincing zombie. Very funny. You can go home now, E. Fine. I won't tell you what I found in my research yesterday, then. Ugh, I hate you. I'm so glad you asked. I looked up a few statistics for this county, looking for any anomalies. First off, there's a high number of missing persons reports in the area. That wouldn't be too unusual if, let's say, the county had a high crime rate. But it doesn't. Violent crimes are actually lower than in other comparable counties. Huh. That's just outright creepy. It gets even better. It turns out that this county has the highest number of clinically insane in the state. And guess what? Conwell Springs County is tiny. Per capita, the difference to the county in second place is humongous. Over a thousand percent. That makes some sense. I found out that this cocky person is locked tight at Ingstrom's. Wow, we should go talk to him, right? He must have some answers. That's the plan. I should probably fill you in on the rest I found. So, I'm gonna head over there today and confront Isaac about the paintings. Don't you think it's a bit risky, Kathy? It could just backfire and piss him off. Oh, I'm hoping it will. Nothing wrong with some good old provocation to make people show their true colors. You never gave him the picture of the lights, right? Nah, I didn't want the guy to faint. He sounded pretty brainwashed about the Holy Trinity thing. And none of the church people know who I am, right? I guess not. So? My point is that you grilled the priest good yesterday. You already tried it your way. I'm a fellow Christian. Maybe I could try something different, like make up a cute cover story and pretend to want to join their church. If he still won't trust me, I can show him my copy of the picture. Maybe it will make him open up. I suppose it would give me enough time to drive back to the city and talk to Jimmy before it gets too late. Yay! Oh, let's do it! I'm so excited. I can't wait to lie to people. You know that's a sin, right? Oh, I'm sure Jesus will make an exception this time. After all, he loves me. I'm not going to waste any time then. Let's catch up on the phone tonight. Okie dokie. Talk to you later. Hello, Jimmy. I've been looking for you. Oh, is it for real this time? Yes. This is all very real. So you're going to ask me about Joseph now? How do you know that? Who told you? You did. Every time you came here. You're not making any sense, Jimmy. We've never met before. I'm making perfect sense. Everyone says so. I'm the sharpest tool in the shed. All bets are off now, Missy. Better buckle up and enjoy the ride. Forget all the rules. No going from top to bottom. No checking off all the items on your list. Start by asking me about the young chronicler. Was Lily Myers the chronicler? The drowned girl, yes. She saw the loops, the endless possibilities. She found that the branches had all been severed. Nothing but inevitability remained, staring her right in the eye. In the end, she was pulled across the Great Threshold, just like I was. I was next. Next for what? You're not listening. I'm next. What happened to you, Jimmy? Why are you in this place? I'm not. I'm six feet under, looking up, watching reruns without a care in the world. You know, Joseph was a beacon. His passing sent ripples traveling in all directions, touching all of us with burning intensity. In my case, resulting in immobilizing guilt. After all, I sent him out there. It was all my fault. What was? What did you ask him to do? Be patient. We'll get there eventually. We need to follow the rules. Let's continue, ironically, with the men who break the rules. 
You mean the Black Hats? They're the men who break the rules? Indeed. Your father broke every rule in the book, did he not? That's a mild way of putting it. I feel your pain, but you will be free of him soon enough. I've seen you atop a great pit, dropping the last remaining memento of him into the empty blackness below. Your mother, on the other hand, that's a story with a different ending. You know m Mom? How... how is she? Why don't you see her yourself and find out? It's complicated. Last time we met was... ugly. Looking away won't make it any less ugly, Kathy. I know, just not yet. Very well. Let's go see the man you reunited with his family. The man in red? Is that who you're talking about? Yes, indeed. Who is he, really? The collector of souls. The one who beckons and prepares. Some call him a spirit guide. Others, a devil dressed in red. You are doing so much better than the last time. Now, ask me about the first thing you can think of. What happened to my grandfather in 81? Oh, poor Joseph. Wrong place, wrong time, wrong friends, wrong life. An unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. There had to be course correction, Kathy. The house always wins. What did you ask him to do? I asked him to find the source and destroy it. For me, for Lily, for all of us. The source of what? Everything. The madness, the betrayals, the limitless suffering. How would he do that? I don't know. Joseph had a plan. He had allies. Allies? Who? The man in red. Someone else, too. I found the message you left for Grandpa. You said, it happened to you, too. What did? Meeting the lights, of course. Don't you have my picture from the night in the forest? You mean this? Oh, yes. They felt so warm. So comfortable luring me in. But when they got close, I could feel my mind split in two. I found myself with one foot on either side of the line. The thin line between hell and here. It felt like breathing through my nose with my mouth underwater. No wonder some sink beneath the surface, never to be heard from again. Was that what happened to Joseph, Jimmy? Did he sink to the bottom? I wish I knew. I'm just a man stuck with his ear up against the wall, picking up a word here and there. I am so tired, Kathy. I can feel the lights even now. Endless static in my head, like a TV tuned to a dead channel. But what are they? Where do they come from? The cradle of obscurity. The Alpha to our Omega. The distorted mirror. Why are you constantly speaking in riddles? Why do you assume I have a choice? We are nearing the end. Ask me about the misguided faithful. Is the Church of the Holy Trinity the misguided faithful? They are, yes. What makes you call them that? Isn't it obvious? They believe the lights are divine. The lights are neither divine nor unholy. They are but a twisted reflection of us. The judge and the jury are innermost child. Our greatest fear. Everything we long for and desire. It's more than most of us can take. The cup runneth over. How do I stop them? You must go to their birthplace. Their source. You must go to the cradle. It's the only way to save your friend. What? Are you talking about Eileen? Yes, she is being claimed. She's in great danger. You have to go back, Kathy. Nurse! I need more than that, Jimmy. <laughs> Nurse, help! I need to find Eileen.
Just old furniture and boxes filled with random junk. Just old furniture. I wonder what the church was like back when Father Bill was in charge. Nothing unusual, just a schedule of typical church events. Found a large old key in here. Hey, what are you doing in here? Cut the bullcrap! Where is she? Where's Eileen? What in the Lord's name are you talking about? Red haired girl, I know she came here to see you. Tell me where she is, or I'm calling the cops. I don't think that's quite necessary. Breaking and entering, are we? You don't understand. My friend has been kidnapped. Funny story. Hands behind your back. Now! Ugh, you gotta be kidding me. You better hope that Father Price doesn't press charges. I want my phone call. <laughs> Can't hear you in there. You are such a fucking prick. Enjoy your little vacation. I know I will. Well, this blows. And I smell like goober. Fan-fucking-tastic. I need to get out of here. Who knows what that freak is doing to Eileen right now? Okay, now what? Hmm, worth a shot. Oops! These paper clips might be useful. Okay, let's see if I still got it. Not perfect, but they should get the job done. I'm so good. Okay, got all my things back. The key I found in the church, too. Huh? Hopes in jar. An inkier heart. Rule me, nemesis. What the hell? Good thing the bike was still where I left it. Locked. I did what you asked, Father. But something is different about this one. It's not taking like it should. She may be protected. Yes, we'll just have to wait and see. More souls, then. Yes, 
they all deserve to bask in the glory of God. Hey, what's that? Eat this! Eileen? Snap out of it! No, God, it's happening again! Just like it did with Grandpa! What did he do to you? Let's get these ropes off of you. That should do it. He had a key on him. A small key with a tag attached, labeled Storage A5. Maybe there's a self-storage facility in town. It looks a lot like the key I found in the attic. Maybe they're somehow related. All right, we'll take it from here. Should we bring, what's her name, to the clinic? Eileen, and no, she's not physically hurt. It's just shock, that's all. I'll take care of her. Please, just drop us off at Grandma's. All right, then, but don't think you're off the hook for that stunt you pulled at the station. Considering the circumstances, I'm going to refrain from hauling your ass back to that cell. But you better not leave town until we've sorted all this out, or you can look forward to a statewide APB. Got it? That's more than fair, Sheriff. Thanks. Good. Come by the station when you've dropped off your friend. We'll need to take your statement. I will. It's my fault this has happened to her. No, it's not. You know exactly who's to blame. That vile man behind bars or whoever is pulling his strings. Go there, find out what he knows, and get to the bottom of this. It's too late for Joseph, but maybe she still has a chance. Well, I'm sure as hell not gonna wait here for her to rot away. Good. She'll be safe with me. All right, then. I'm off. Okay, there's a place in town. Got the address, I should head over there. Storage A7. Aha! Empty. Found a tape in there. There's also something else. A custody appeal form for me? July 15th, 1981? I don't believe it. He... He tried to get me back from my mom. Right to the very end. Pull yourself together, Kathy. This is Joseph Rain. 
Operation Log, Part 4. August 8th, 1981. The area appears to be circular with... ...along the outer perimeter. I've determined that some kind of endothermic reaction is taking place. So it's important to be observant of changes in temperature. Find the source. By severing the link, perhaps I can save them. Jimmy and all the others. Reoccurring dream. I'm standing in front of a huge black hole in a clearing in the woods. There's a man dressed in red, urging me to jump. I'm afraid to, but I take the plunge anyway. For some reason, I don't think I have anything to lose. As I'm falling, I reach for the parachute cord, but to my horror, there's nothing there. That's when I wake up. Storage A6. This might come in handy. I guess he felt compelled to tell the world how hard he was looking for something. Lunatic. Where is it? Was he trying to uncover something in these paintings? I don't believe this. They're ruined. He must have used that paint thinner on the paintings. That means there's only a single painting left. The one in the cabin. Anybody home? Guess not. Locked. Hmm. It's a simple tumbler lock. A hidden picture. Oh my god, that's Nathan. He's holding a girl underwater. It must be Lily. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Lily wrote a suicide note, so either she planned this or foresaw it. Nathan is drowning Lily in the lake. Nathan? Yes? I know about Lily, Nathan. I like Lily. Nathan, tell me what happened the day Lily died. I don't know. It's okay, Nathan. I'm a friend. I know the Red Man, too. You... you do? Yes. He told me to ask you about what happened to Lily. He said, 
that you would tell me the truth, because you are honest. You're honest, aren't you, Nathan? Lily was angry that time. Angry and sad, mostly angry. Angry with you? Angry with everybody. Mama was asleep, Papa too. Okay, what happened next? Lily wanted to go down to the lake. She told me to hold her under the water for a while. She said I had to. She had painted it and everything she painted was supposed to happen. I, I didn't want to, but Lily said she would tell Mama that I was bad if I didn't. But the Red Man says it was an accident and that Lily is in a better place. It's okay, Nathan. Lily was sick. It's not anyone's fault. When did you first meet the Red Man? I don't know. I, I see him in the woods sometimes. He and Lily always fought. They did? Uh, about what? He wanted Lily to take her medicine. What kind of medicine? Pills to make her less sad and angry? I don't know. Just medicine. But you know what? It's okay. I still talk to her all the time. You talk to Lily? And she talks back? Yes. Take me to her, Nathan. Take me to Lily. You promise not to tell Mama? I won't. I promise. Take me there. Okay. See? <sighs> Get away from them, Nathan. They're dangerous. <laughs> no, they're nice. Look! Maybe they can't affect him for some reason. Poor little Mender met her end. Witnessed so much she could not comprehend. Claimed by the lake, she screamed to her god, struggled for air as she twisted and clawed. But all was in vain, and her cries went unheard. Twas a heartbreaking theater of the absurd. <coughs> there, there, you're being dramatic. No pain, no gain. At least that color looks good on you. Astute observation, Bill. This room does hold the key. Well then. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Jesus! Nathan? How long was I out? hidden safe. There's also a poem here written by Father Bill. I copied it to my notepad. I'm sure there's a hidden meaning in this, but I think I'm missing something in order to make sense of it. Six-digit code. Good to know.
In the text, Father Bill's family members are used as reference points. Could he be referring to the physical layout of the graves? I copy the grave layout to my notebook next to the poem. Okay, these graves must somehow correspond to Father Bill's poem. Let's see if I can figure it out. No, that connection doesn't make sense to me. Of course! The sign of the Lord! Some of the graves can form the shape of a cross! Now, if I can only figure out which dates are relevant. Yes! That must be it! Three dawns mean three births, and they're all adjacent to Father Bill's grave. I'm sure I'm close now. I just have to somehow narrow down these to the correct number of digits. I think this section tells me in what order I should pick the digits to reconstruct the code. from lasting to brief, year, month, day. That's gotta be it. Yes! Found a bunch of torn out Bible pages and a tape in there. There's a poem here, written by Father Bill. This is William T. Price. My visions concerning my sons are troubling. I've watched them become corrupted with pride, turning their backs on our prophet, the Crimson One. I've seen the history of the church one.
I am. You guys want my statement? Yeah, the sheriff is waiting for you. All right. Let's talk, Sheriff. And that's when I found that creep with her tied up in the crypt. Jesus. I had my suspicions about that church, but I never thought it went this deep. Yeah. So, what happens now? I'll call the judge and get a warrant. If we find anything else, that bastard won't get away with it. Okay. Can I go talk to him? Go ahead. Ask Lenny to go with you if you need him. Will do. Thanks, Sheriff. Think nothing of it. Listen to this, Isaac. This is William T. Price. My what is this? concerning my sons are troubling. I've watched them become corrupted with pride, turning their backs on our prophet, the Crimson One. I've seen the history of the church wiped clean, replaced with trickery and lies. This message is part of a fail-safe. I don't believe it. Father saw all of this coming. God, have I strayed from the faith? It's not too late to redeem yourself, Isaac. I've met the Crimson One. We're on the same side. Preposterous. No one has witnessed that apostate since Father's death. I've been north of the lake, but he's nowhere to be found. He abandoned us all, and the divine work now rests upon my shoulders. You believe that you are carrying out the work of the Crimson One? Don't think I can't hear that mocking tone of yours. I will speak of this no longer. He mentioned north of the lake. That's part of Conwell Woods. I'll probably have to narrow it down more, but it's something. Father, have you abandoned me? I will atone for my sins, I swear it. God have mercy on me. I'll just borrow this for a while. My God, what is this place?
met her end. Someone left this message here for me. Intense. Oh, they're making me a bit dizzy. Greetings! You again. Me again. You better have some answers, Crimson One. All in due time. Your friend is being claimed by the darkness. She's standing on the brink of the abyss as we speak. Are you talking about Eileen? Yes. If you wish to save her, you must descend. Why? What is down there? The tribulation. The reflection of the soul. We call it... The Mending. Who's we? My kind, servants of the old god. To what end do you serve this god? What does your kind actually want? All we want is for you to take your medicine, Kathy. For you to grow and be happy. If that's the case, why were all those people hurt? Lily? Jimmy? Grandpa? You misunderstand. What one wants and what one is able to do are two different things. Happiness is not a one-way street. It cannot be given, only earned. Your grandfather understood that. He embraced it. Wait, you saw Grandpa? Oh yes, right here. He was a tortured soul, desperate for some kind of meaning after losing the light of his life. You. He sought the power below, the vessel of redemption. But Grandpa didn't make it. He failed. How could I succeed when he wasn't able to? He was so much stronger than me, so much braver. Is that what you believe? Perhaps you don't know him as well as you think. But why me? Why are you making me do this? Because you so desperately need it, Kathy. You're haunted by your past, by all these painful memories long forgotten. They follow you like a shadow, pulling you down. They taint your every thought, impulse, and deep desire. It is foul to us. This is crazy. I could just walk away, get on my bike and drive, forget I was ever here. There's nothing stopping you. Eileen. I can't leave her like that. I see now why he speaks so highly of you. Surreal. It looks like grandma's, but different. Hey, where'd all my things go? My pockets are empty. There was a pen hidden inside. You're not supposed to be here. Who are you? You look just like me. I should ask you the same thing, imposter. Do you like what we did to mom? Don't you just want to kill her sometimes? I know I do. Mom? She's here? <laughs> you don't know anything, do you? Now, I'd love to stay and chat, doppelganger. But I have more important things to do. Ta-ta.
Oh my god. Mom? You're here? There was a scalpel hidden inside the wall. Got it. There you go, Mom. Are you okay? <laughs> no! <laughs> I had no choice. I had to put you away. You started hurting yourself. You started hurting me. I forgive you. Out of this place. Refrigerator magnets in the shape of Scrabble tiles. The score values are off, though. I remember because the game I played with E the other day. Hoax in jar, an inkier heart, rule me nemesis. Not sure what to make of it all. Refrigerator mag the score value pokes in not sure what to make. There's a weird scarab thing in there. Got it. Killed mom. That wasn't mom, it was some kind of monster. We're all monsters to you, aren't we? Kill her, dad. No, it can't be. Who's your daddy now, bitch? Stay away from me. I've been angry with you for as long as I can remember. I've hated you more than words can say. I will never forgive you, Dad, but I'm done being angry. I'm done with letting you have an impact on my life. There are two padlocks here. One requires a key, the other is a combination lock. A single padlock remains, but it needs a key. The door is sealed with a thick chain attached with a padlock. This padlock might be useful. I don't think I need to use the chain itself for anything right now. A single padlock remains, but it needs a key. It's one of the chains which used to seal the door. The door is sealed with a thick chain attached with a padlock. The 
This should be pretty hard to break. A sturdy iron padlock. It has a hard shell. I'll need something heavy to break it. That should work. That combination makes no sense. I want to go home. You'll never go home. We won't let you. When you threw me away, this place took me in, nurtured me. Do you regret what you did? Part of me does. I wish things could have been different. But I can't change the past. It's time for me to let you go. must be pure. This is a fleeting moment, but I've seen what comes ahead. Who are you? The dweller in the lake, the conduit. Lily? I feel like I know her, but something cracks inside. I don't understand any of this. What do you want from me? Only what you want from yourself. Nothing more, nothing less. We are nearing the end. He is ready to see you now. Who is? You know who, Kathy. Now what to do with the actual chain? All right, we should be good to go. Do you hate us so much? What did we ever do to you? This mirror-mirror routine is getting tiring. And I'm not afraid anymore. 
I see you for what you are. You are nothing but a fearful little child, and there is nowhere left for you to hide. Now get the hell out of my way. No! You look a bit pale. No, I'm the original. I am! This can't be happening. I'm speechless. That's a first. No. It can't be. Grandpa! It's so good to see you, Kathy. Is it really you? You've been here for all this time? It hasn't been that long from my point of view. You look exactly the same. You haven't aged at all. But how is this even possible? You're, you're dead. We buried you. You don't have to worry about that now, Kathy. I've missed you, Grandpa. I wanted to come back so many times. I know you did. I've been watching you every step of the way. I found out how you tried to get me back from Mom and everything. I just wanted you to be safe. I wanted what's best for you. Can I get you out of here somehow? I don't know how all this works. I'm afraid that's not possible. I chose to remain here. So we could meet one last time. But I just got you back. I can't bear to lose you again. You don't need me, Kathy. You never did. You're stronger than you'll ever know. I'm so proud of the woman that you've become. This... this is so unfair. This fucking sucks. I know, darling. I know. But why are you here then? Is it just another test? No, the tests are over, Kathy. I'm breaking all the rules just by being here. We have worked so hard to make this happen. You can end the cycle, stop the suffering. This whole place needs to be ripped away, separated. That red fiend has no intention of letting your friend go. The only way to save her is to destroy this place. What do I have to do? You have to finish what I started. Ascend and burn them all. Yes, the red ones above feed this place. Make them lick the flames. Hurry, now, before he sees us. Wait! Don't go! I need to go back up. I need to get out of here. Ugh, my head. It's like the worst hangover ever. I need to stay focused. Burn them all, Kathy. Burn them all. That should be enough. Major forest fire raging in Conwell Woods. The cause of the blaze has yet to be determined. But the latest reports say that the fire has been successfully contained, largely thanks to the local lake, which provided ample water for the dowsing efforts. Over to you, Mark. Oh, thank goodness you're all right. You're back. We were worried about you. Oh, thank God it actually worked. Are you okay, E? I think so, but I feel a bit different. Yeah? You were out for a long time. Do you remember anything? I think Isaac drugged me. I started feeling dizzy and weak. He carried me into the woods. I remember hearing the wind in the leaves and the biting cold. There was a weird, sharp smell in the air, too. I'm not sure what happened next. Things are a bit blurry, but I had a strange dream with a shimmering girl watching over me. It felt like she kept me safe somehow, 
then I woke up on this couch. It must have been your guardian angel. I think so too. Well, I'm glad you're okay, E. Things looked scary there for a bit. Yeah, Mary Elizabeth told me what happened, how you found me and got Isaac arrested. Yes, about that poor man. The sheriff called. Something happened while you were away. Welcome home, son. Guess he finally grew a conscience. I can't help but feel bad for him, despite what he did to me. In a way, he was a victim too. At least we stopped him from hurting any more people. So, I guess this really is goodbye. A stupid part of me thought that if I would find the truth, I could be close to him again. It's not stupid. We all look for love in the strangest of places. It's an inseparable part of human nature. Jeez, when did you become so philosophical, E? I told you, I feel different. Yeah, me too. Do you think any of it was real? I don't know, E, but I hope we managed to stop it, once and for all. You know, despite everything, I think we made a half-decent team. Really? You do? Well, except for the part where you got yourself kidnapped. Try not to do that next time, okay? Wait, there will be a next time?